post-war with the foundation of the welfare state, with the foundation of the National Health Service, with the foundation of a society in which people were protected and the rise of the trade union movement, everything got better. It never became perfect, but everything got better because we recognized the dignity of the individual and we recognized the rights of the humans in this country, the right to education, the right to health care, the right to protections at work against exploitative or even dangerous employers. You were protected at home, at work, at school, in hospitals, and it was a hard-fought battle, a hard-fought battle. But it's never won, you see. And this is... I think when I retire, when I, when I hang up my headphones, it will be when I stop being taken by surprise by things, when I stop having moments of realisation, when I stop feeling my comprehension of big issues improve, when, when I stop thinking, crikey, I'm, I'm still in the foothills of understanding stuff. As soon as I smugly and almost certainly incorrectly start thinking I've got everything sussed, then I'm off. You know, the kind of person who never changes their opinion about anything. A 20, 30 year window. Every strike is wrong. Uh, uh, every unemployed person is a scumbag. Every single mother is undeserving of... So you did these... I mean, very much a passport to prominence in, in, in British media now, uh, right-wing British newspapers. Think of a, of a newspaper column. It's climate change, industrial action... Uh, unemployment benefit, whatever it might, public sector, whatever it might be, there, there, there it is. Absolutely written in stone. And, and, and no desire to understand anything. I'll hang up my headphones when I stop being taken by surprise by stuff. And the biggest thing to take me by surprise in the last couple of years is that realisation that no progress is permanent. No progress is permanent. And that's why I find Mick Lynch a uniquely fascinating character. Uh, I, I, the, it, one of his predecessors at the RMT, Bob Crow, was, was similarly engaging and, and compelling and indeed brilliant at um, arguing. <laughs> but there's something about Mick Lynch which I think is even more impressive and important. And, and it's, it's a sort of bedrock of intellectual sophistication. There is, I think, perhaps a more urgent threat to those victories, to those protections, to those rights that is really coming into focus quite fast. Liz Truss essentially boasting about how hard she will work to strip you of your rights. And she is doing so with a fair degree of confidence that you will cheer her for doing it. That's why Mick Lynch is so fascinating. That's why when Mick Lynch pops up on the telly with some blowhard thinking that they'll be able to um, knock him in around the studio in an interview, he ends up wiping the floor with them because he understands stuff and he is motivated, I think, by a genuine sense of urgency. And that sense of urgency for me has grown in the last week when I look at Sunak and Truss embarking upon this bizarre attempt to compete about who can describe the consequences of the last 12 years in the most negative terms. I, I, I mean, it is actually breathtaking. There's never been a leadership election like it. The Chancellor of Exchequer and the Foreign Secretary competing to decide who is going to be the harshest critic of the government they were in until a month ago. It's madness, right? And one of the areas in which they are competing is this. Who's going to attack... Trades unions or workers most viciously. Liz Truss or Rishi Sunak. And Mick Lynch remains one of the only people who is manning the barricade. That's why this is such a fascinating week for me in, in, in British politics and why this, in, this industrial action is about much more than railways. 